Mm -hmm. My moustache hair is pointing up into my nose and it's tickly. No, Atlas has gone quiet. Oh, because he knows it's raining and he doesn't want to go out into the rain. <laughs> Hi, I'm Phil, Chartered Architect and Director of PWS Architecture and Design, a North East based architecture practice, and this is my intern Theo. Hello. Welcome to episode one, season one, of Back to the Drawing Board. So in this episode, we're going to go through a few things, mainly what we're doing here, um, why you're watching us. We're going to talk about kind of the future for both of us because that's going to play into to what this podcast is about. So we're going to talk about how I'm about to go away to uni, um, Phil's new house that we're currently in. Um, oh, less than a week. For less than a week, yeah. So things might be less dusty in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of it, it, talking about architecture. It's, it's an architecture-based podcast, um, so things that might help you, things that will help students, people looking to start an office, or maybe people that are newly in an office. Um, so I think the first step of this is tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah this guy. <laughs> so I'm obviously a um, chartered architect, so I'm registered with the ARB to call myself an architect, and the RIBA to become a chartered architect. Mm. I've gone through my part one, my part two, and my part three, which for any of those listening in America is the kind of the UK based system that we do. Um, so in total about seven years at university, um, it could have been a doctor in that time as everyone likes to remind me. <laughs> um, or a lawyer. Or a lawyer. Or something well paid. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been nice, wouldn't it? That would have been great. <laughs> um, so obviously in as part of this, we'll cover that process and we'll kind of track Theo's route through, um, whichever route he decides to take, which obviously will be a a whole other conversation and a whole other uh, episode to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready for this one. I'm ready for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a that's a tangent to avoid, isn't it? Because we've yeah, because we'll go we've on gone an that episode worth of that. <laughs> we'll go on that tangent, and that'll be it. Maybe yeah. we'll have to do that tangent now. Cut the middle Cut bit, it and make put it, the it into the episode. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, at the end of this week, um, we I mean we've left this till last minute, very architecty of us. But at the yeah, end of this I week, go away on Sunday. To university and in Glasgow, I'm going to Strathclyde University study architecture. So we're currently in um, Tyne and Weir, so kind of new, between Newcastle and Durham. Uh, so not too far away. At mm -hmm. least you're kind of a quick train ride away. Quick two-hour train ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you're so sad. Yeah, you always come back for Christmas and actually earn some money, which would be nice, wouldn't it? Oh, that would be so. That would be great. <laughs> Me and my dad are going to do my uh, my budget tomorrow, and I'm not looking forward to it. Mainly because currently I have no money to spend. I'm running off £400 from my last wage. <laughs> <laughs> so, me too. <laughs> Thanks to this. <laughs> and the death trap that is my mother. Like you, you just pointed straight at that beam and I was like, what's, what's it done? <laughs> <laughs> well, someone's gone all Rolling Stones on it and painted it black. <laughs> the other side of it is uh, natural. It, and then that one in the oh, background is also say, It used to be red. Uh, no, it's not at all. Yeah, I guess the process I'm about to go to is I'm I'm starting my part one bachelor's degree. So that's a three or four year um, university course, depending on what route I go. And that 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 thing is, if I take a year out, then I'll do two years, a year in a different country, and then a year back at my uni. Or I can just do all three years and save myself having to wait yet another year to qualify. Any idea what country you'd go to? Oh, definitely one of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to go north because they just seem to be smarter up there. There's not, there's not that much north. No, there's not. Greenland like and Iceland. Greenland, English, Iceland. As the crow flies north. Uh, Canada. Canada, yeah. yeah. The Netherlands. You could do all of the Scandi country, really, oh, which is what I did my master's thesis on, was yeah. Scandinavian architecture. Did you go there? Yeah. 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 Did, did you spend a year there or were we just... No, no, I did like a, a week. No, I, did, uh, I think it was seven whole days um, with a backpack. That sucks. Yeah, with a backpack and uh, decided... Wait, please, please let me sleep inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in, we were in hostels. I took Dean with us. Oh, that's awful. Um, yeah. We I haven't been taking Dean with you, not yeah. hostels. Oh, hostels are fine. Yeah. yeah. Dean's the problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I went for a, went for a whole week. I, don't, I don't even know who Dean is, so I, I'm worried he might hear this and be like, yeah, why, is he, why is he having a go at me? <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, I think one day... It, we logged a ridiculous amount of steps. I think it was like 20-something, no, 30-something thousand. 
we just Each. we walked. Yeah, we just oh, basically God. walked all day. Walked. Not like both of you, like oh, I've got fifteen thousand. What's that added together? <laughs> yeah, well, no, I was getting up and uh, getting up at like six in the morning and getting to bed at like ten o'clock at night. It was oh, it, was, it was brutal, <laughs> but yeah, it's a lovely place to be. It's a great yeah. place with a lot of interest in architecture. I also, I know it's weird, but I like to go to South America just because I, I find the place so fascinating. Or like Mexico, just because the the culture seems fun. So once you've finished with your bachelor's, you'll move into the master's degree and whether you do yes. that as a, as a master's at uni or whether we do that as an apprenticeship. Yeah, so that's what that's what for a while I've been thinking about is the way I kind of want to do it is less conventional. In fact, I'd go as far as saying it's very unconventional. I want to do my part one. Currently, I want to do my part one at uni and then finish my master's as an apprentice. Um because from what I can tell, it's just the clever way of doing it, and I don't get why anyone would do a master's at uni. Because some of us didn't Phil. have options. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I, I've spoken to, obviously, a few other architects. I'm not cheating on you. I've told you about this before. Um, and kind of, basically, the, the way it goes is if if someone in the firm has an apprentice apprenticeship, it's kind of like they're seen as, because they've got this extra experience learning on the job, they can get up to standard much sooner because before they even come into having a job they've worked it and obviously i think there's what is there two years of the the full architecture course that is spent obviously working in a firm so you've got your year out after year part one part one and your part two yeah yeah and then your part seven is just work experience with like three days in university um yeah so what i think i was saying if i can remember is you do you do a year out for your part three, which is your seventh year, traditionally, or if you do an apprenticeship, that that's a level seven apprenticeship, and that covers your part two and three. Um, yeah, and it's back to back though. It's not as if you do one yeah. a year out and then another. You yeah, do yeah, back to back, which you can do. I know I I that's how I did mine. I did my masters, and then I didn't have to do a year out because of the year that you need to do within sort of the X number of years of the final exam, mm. that one year at the university counts towards that. So that was what, that's how I did it. Yeah. Until it all went a bit pear-shaped. And it's um, for your, for the year out between the part one and the part two. I wasn't listening to you there, so I might be about to repeat what you've just said. <laughs> <laughs> but for the, for the year between the part one and the part two that's where you put your work experience year and is that so that you can get into your part two yeah so, so you can finish your part one so yeah so you get your part two so essentially um not all of them do so each university has different requirements but typically right. you'll need a year's worth of experience um and that's when you can do it abroad um you don't necessarily have ah, to so okay you can obviously do your year abroad as a gap year, whatever it is, mm -hmm. in the middle of your um, course you're doing now. But then you need to have typically a year's worth of experience underneath an architect. Yeah. Before going into your master's or some within a relevant field. Mm -hmm. So most places, again, every course has its own requirements. But my understanding and my experience was a year's worth of experience within the industry overseen by someone. So I was overseen by a chartered ar uh, architectural technologist. Who wasn't a chartered architect. No, which, which caused you me around. problems later down the line. Yeah. But he um, he obviously signed off my stuff then, but I could have done a year out and some of my friends did a year out at that point. Mm -hmm. And then you come back into your master's and then when you get to your part three, it has to all be signed off by a qualified architect. Not necessarily have to be charged, yeah. but a qualified architect, um, which was where I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So my, my route was I did my three years bachelor, one year out, my two years master, and then I was working during my master's and went straight into my part three where I got to the end of the course and found out that because my boss at the time was a technician, I had to find work experience elsewhere with an architect to sign off a year's worth of experience to qualify. And that took three years, Yeah, so you years. said screw that and you started a business. <laughs> no, I started the business before then. Oh, right. You'd already started. Yeah, I started PWS. This, I started PWS in November 25th 2018 oh, i thought it i thought it was 2020 no so so i've got my timelines really wrong so okay. in 2018 was when i started going so i was self-employed mm -hmm. and then at the beginning of 2020 so that was when um the first project happened and i got insured i got all my insurances in place then which i didn't need to but it's part was of this the, for graylings 
Yeah. So this is part of the the uh, requirements under the ARB and RIBAs that you have indemnity insurance. So even though I wasn't underneath those as a registration board, I kind of took the position of if I'm going to do this, I've got to do it properly. Yeah. So that was why I did it. Um, and then I started doing jobs for friends and little bits like that, which is how like the WC. Um, yeah. For those who haven't been on my website, the WC is a bit of an iconic place in newcastle it's an un- it was originally an underground toilets and we turned it into a wine bar and then we changed the ladies equivalent of the underground men's toilets into the uk's smallest gym bar i think it goes as as of recording that's, this that's an impressive claim it's a pretty cool yeah, yeah pretty cool project but <laughs> so you know we did things like that and then it got to 2020 where um at the beginning of 2020 i was offered some freelancing work so i did that to gain that experience to get signed off on my part three yeah. So when I started my part three in 2018. And you were doing that technically under a qualified, qualified architect. architect. Yeah, because he had me as his contractor Yeah, in a way. Um, so that went all to pot in the August of 2020 when we decided our only option with no one employing and everyone getting dropped left, right and centre was to work for ourselves full time. And yeah. luckily um, I got in with someone uh, who was willing to sign off all of my PEDRs and my development records without kind of me being in their office. He was happy for me to work for myself and we went back and forth and had lots of conversations about work, showing examples, going into depth into a lot of things. And in the end, that was what got me past. And then here I am today. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, sure, well, I'm sure we'll go into more depth on that another time. But I mean, that's... That's unconventional as that, well, I suppose. Yeah, that's a full episode. Yeah, I mean, that was... <laughs> Yeah, eight and a bit years. Yeah. Yeah, 2018. Oh, no, because it was 2022 I became chartered. 20- yeah, it was a few months ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was It was February. So, yeah, nearly 10 years. Mm. Until nine and a half years. So I suppose the next thing to talk about is what people what should doing? expect from yeah. kind of, you know, what we're going to be covering whilst we do this. So obviously, we're starting this pretty late on in the year, so this will be quite a short season. Season one's probably going to be a lot of setting the pace, talking about kind of the starts of things, blogging his start through university. Yeah. Another thing that we've thought might be nice and a bit further down the line is blogging the progress of this. The house. <laughs> um, because it's going to be interesting, I'd like to think. Yeah. Um, I've got a few ideas. I've spoken to a few people. <laughs> <sighs> this, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. But this is a an old, a very, very, very old uh, cottage yeah. in need of some serious work that was done last in the seventies and hasn't really been touched since. Seventies was the worst time. That could be a that could be a good episode. <laughs> the worst time for architecture. You just don't, you just don't like brutalism. <laughs> I, I don't like brutalism or pebble dash, so I hate the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> so the worst thing I've ever seen was a, a pebble dash brutalist building. I just thought I'm gonna be sick. Uh, I, I I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> I guarantee that's all the concrete spalling off the reinforcement pound. I'm just going. Mm, how can we f- cover this all up? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, concrete, More concrete. And stones. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, it's horrible! It's so horrible. Why would anyone do that? They were weird in the seventies, man. Oh, yeah, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of drugs. So, <laughs> so, as, as you know, we'll be covering. Everything Theo does, and we'll yeah. probably be catching up via Zoom, and we'll probably do that as kind of extra episodes, or maybe on some sort of subscriber platform. Um, we'll also be covering the house, and there'll be obviously chats between us, various other people. We're looking at getting some guests on, which would be nice, kind of yeah. talk to other people's experience of becoming an architect or using that as a starting block to something else. Um, two of which I think we've already mentioned, but there'll be more in there. And we can talk to other people in other parts of the industry, technologists, engineers, contractors, project managers, the list goes on. Basically, giving you guys information for kind of just how to help you within the world of architecture, really. Yeah, it covers pretty much everything. And hopefully we can kind of use that as a kind of jumping point to introduce people into architecture get people kind of comfortable with maybe setting up their own if they're not feeling confident with it yeah going into the university scene and kind of dealing with all that but also knowing kind of little hacks budget tips that kind of thing yeah and i think one of the things we've talked about focusing on is those things where if we get the opportunity to if we have kind of a little bit of backing from patreons or whatever Mm. we can start to get softwares and hardware and stationary books even do kind of guided city tours of you know iconic bits of architecture to kind of help people and it might be that some you know some of you struggle to get out and about especially during you know university and the hectic work 
time to actually go out and see some of these things. Yeah. So it could have helped with that. So we've got an Instagram page set up, which is... Back to the drawing board, IG. <laughs> very, IG. Very efficient. We're planning on setting up a YouTube page, which obviously will we'll tell you what that is. Um, well, you'll you find out. You'll now. probably find out if you're seeing this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if not, though, we'll obviously we'll announce what that's called at some point, and we're planning on setting up a Patreon account as well. Yeah, so um, we'll have tiers of subscribers, and it'll mm-hmm. be good to use that as the kind of the hub for community activity. Yeah. Get everyone together. People can share tips, tricks, and ask questions, and kind of suggest topics so that yeah. we can tailor episodes towards what you guys actually want to know and understand. And that way, we won't just be rambling on about nothing, and we can make sure it's actually relevant to what people need to or want to hear. Uh, we can go on tangents. We can so go That'll on tangents. That'll be fine. <laughs> That's another thing we can have. We can have just a tangent episode. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to instead of getting rid of stuff and editing, just save it all, and keep it for a. We'll have to do like a Christmas special. Christmas special of just us talking about nothing. I was talking about. <laughs> but the other thing as well is, this was it leads us into being able to. There's nothing there to lean on. <laughs> <laughs> you get ready. To... Like, What's <laughs> but I suppose it also gives us an opportunity then as well, if there is ever an opportunity for us to maybe do like a live chat with people as well, so we can obviously have people come on and guest from kind of the community mm. i've had a really good idea we should put some acoustic paneling on that door and then close it it is closed it's not uh, yeah but the room the one into their room is oh yeah but it's like a, it's like an airlock there's nothing there to lean on <laughs> no there's nothing there to lean on so lean <laughs> i just went for it i was like oh <laughs> thanks for joining us for episode one um, if you're listening to this on any podcasting platform, please consider leaving us a review. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. And consider following us on Instagram at Back to the Drawing Board IG. And please consider subscribing to our Patreon for longer episodes, bonus content, and to help build our community. We'll see you next time when we return Back to the Drawing Board. Is that picking up?